In the three. Hey Bronco, one second. I'm just trying to get. Okay. The host has asked you to start your video. I'm not starting a video. And then we're just waiting to see if anybody else will come in, Bronco. Okay. All right, well, it looks like we have three or so, and uh, whoever else comes in, we'll just let them in. Bronco, why don't you go ahead and get started, because I know you're busy. Uh, how many of us are there? 
I have no idea. I see three. There might be four or something there, but they're further away from the phone, so I can't see. And then another one's trying to get in. And mm -hmm. we'll see. so there's out of the 14 or so athletes we have here. We'll see how many. Usually around 8 to 10, 12. Okay. So I can see there is a bit more people on Eva's phone, Katarina. Ciao, Katarina. Katarina, Katarina. She cannot speak. I cannot hear her, yeah? Well, we could hear her earlier. She just needs to turn her mic off or on, but. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, Lady Branco and I have worked together for a bit. He's been working with our athletes that are playing pro abroad. He's helped a bunch of them already. He's a, a physical therapist in Serbia, working with some bas basketball national team athletes, et cetera, et cetera. He'll introduce himself and then just talk about some of the early warning signs for injury and things like that. Because, like you all know, some of you can't even play right now because of these things. Um, and the big thing that he's about is uh, preventing injury. So I'm going to let him take it away. And, and yeah, Branko, we have at least 30 minutes, and then I think everybody's got to go. Sorry for the tech difficulties. OK, I suppose you hear me loud and clear. Thank you, Ryan, for this uh, invitation and possibility to speak with your players. So for those who doesn't, uh, who haven't met me still, um, I am a master in physical therapy and master in medical science, and I'm the owner of the Pro Physio Rehabilitation Center in, in Serbia, Belgrade, Serbia. And uh, I do a lot, of, a lot of work with uh, athletes, with pro athletes, with athletes that are in development, especially in development. And that is why this topic came out about early warning signs, because I swear the, the place where I stand at this point of my career is that I can see just one thing when our player gets injured, then the V is a team have failed this player. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. Ryan, please tell me if anything goes wrong with so we as a, as a staff, as a team who follows and supports the player, we fail the player. So, I think his internet went out, everyone. So just Do you hear me? Oh, here we go. I think he's fine. Now we can. Yeah.
שלום. Okay, I'm gonna let him back in. I think his internet is acting strange, everyone, so. Does anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah? Yes. Okay. 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 So just need to bring some more light in here because I'm on my phone and I don't know why is everything happening. <laughs> so uh, for me to continue. Oh, microphone is muted. It's good now. You can just continue. Lighting's good. The audio is good. Everything's good. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Early warning signs are uh, is is a nice topic, easy topic that you should all be familiar with. And uh, let's start talking about before this goes away again. Um, early signs are closely connected to the overuse injuries. Overuse every injury starts first with overuse because overuse is uh, a term or uh, let's say a thing that we follow. You have a lot of training. There are certain points on your body that uh, that are uh, holding much low, more load than than uh, the, than other parts. That depends on the sport that you do, uh, and uh, there are, there are some form of specific specific points: your knee, uh, thigh, sh and uh, shoulder. Uh, and and lateral shoulder. Those are the points in, in and if you're in, in tennis, then definitely the elbow, but we're now speaking about volleyball. So um, uh, lower kinetic chain uh, and those, those um, structures that are on the lower kinetic chain, such as uh, Achilles tendon and patellar tendon, anterior knee, are uh, great and strong tendons that uh, uh, gather a lot of force, a lot of energy that when you play, when you jump, when you run, when you do whatever with your, with your lower kinetic chain. And uh, you have, a, we as a team have to address uh, those areas with uh, certain, certain care and certain amount of, of time and certain amount of, uh, of uh, understanding about those areas because uh, the, those areas will uh, will gradually start to to go out of out of system very gradually you will not feel it as uh, more than a slight discomfort on short term pain that will uh, okay you rest and it will go away but when you do uh, those kind of loading again even a bit in a in a, a bit less amount of loading, it will come back again and then again and then again. Um, as young player, as uh, your body potential is very high and and, and great, uh, you will overcome those pains with ease, uh, and this will just look like it is uh, easy for you to overcome, let's say, slight Achilles tendonitis or sl slight patellar tendonitis. But what will happen is that uh, you will change your, your dynamic posture. You will, uh, you, will you will start to compensate with your, with your lower kinetic chain, with your legs. 
in so to speak, or with your shoulder griddle and pectoral griddle, if the, we are speaking about kinetic chain, uh, higher kinetic chain, that means arms and, and, and uh, pectoral, pectoral griddle. So uh, those compensations are things that uh, you have to be aware of and everything uh, that is painful uh, is a slightly misfunction in is slight means function and brings some more means function misfunctioning of upper parts of your of your body of your kinetic chain um, so those this is something that uh, uh, even a less experienced player already felt and already already knows knows how to how to how to see but the managing of of those things are are problematic and why is it problematic because this loading that you have during your training is not going away it is increasing as the time goes this loading increases and increases and increases and you have more games more often games uh, the um, the, the, I'm looking for the word, I'm sorry. Um, okay, at the beginning you will have, let's say four games during the, the month and then they will become six games. And at the end of the season, you will have eight games or even more during the month. So uh, this uh, maximum loading will will definitely increase during the season and you will have no time to rest or to treat your your slight injury properly so when i hear from a player i have had a slight injury of my ankle of or, or my shoulder i am already in a in a problem because uh, we are in some full form of miscommunication we are in some form of denial of things that are developing so we cannot run away from problems. We can only solve the problems and we will face the musculoskeletal problem. Uh, we will solve the problem when we face them and we understand them. Uh, so early sign is pain, the, the discomfort and slight pain, whether it is in a Achilles tendon or it is plantar fascia or it is in, uh, in uh, calf muscle or it is if it is in in a patellar tendon or in any other part, those things that I, that I spoke about, Achilles tendon, patellar, anterior knee, uh, anterior shoulder and lateral shoulder, those are definitely positions where the, where the loading is, um, is summarized and uh, um, peak loading of whatever you do is in those places. So um, keep good care of those places and uh, all the pain and discomfort that you feel during uh, pre-season, during uh, season or, or in, any, in any other period of your, of your, um, of your uh, uh, career, you must address those even small pains with, uh, with cautious and with care. And uh, sooner you report them to your medical staff the better we can we can provide you with uh, with uh, assistance. Uh, the problem becomes when you are in uh, becomes greater when you are in uh, in, comp in competitive in competition part of the season, and you have those pains. Usually, medical staff is instructed uh, to relieve you of your pains and not to solve your kinetic problem. So you'll probably receive some uh, painkillers or some corticosteroid injections or something like that to ease your pain, but this will not correct your, your compensated posture. And uh, this compensated posture will be corrected in a uh, in matter of, um, in a way that you will do proper exercises and you will, uh, during these exercises, promote your, uh, your uh, both. And this, this is the, this is something that you need to be led through. You will um, make compensation with your symmetrical exercises in the same time when your asymmetrical exercises happens. And this is something that needs to be explained to you how to work and how to, how to do proper, properly these exercises. 
Now I'm sorry that I'm not there to show this to make the the um, uh, show how do you call it the training that where I will show you the the basic exercises for uh, for uh, knees for Achilles tendons for your shoulders and especially for your backs. Uh, uh, back is some uh, is um, uh, uh, lower back and the spine is. Uh, uh, um, is point that I will explain a bit later, because it has its own its own uh, specificities. And uh, let me go back to Achilles tendon and and uh, uh, anterior knee. So Achilles tendon gather entire force from your entire body, and this force goes to the foot, and the foot is neurodynamical, some excellent, excellent device, your foot and uh, all the machinery and all cannot, cannot do, cannot replicate brain and cannot replicate human foot. So Achilles tendon needs entire kinetic, at least lower kinetic chain to be healthy. So your Achilles tendon can be painful because of your uh, calf muscle dysfunction, because of your hamstring dysfunction. It can be painful because of your gluteal dysfunction, linear, of course, the, quad, the quadriceps, even the abdominal and the back dysfunction. All those muscles work together and bring, bring loading and effective uh, response from, from uh, Achilles tendon um, in your lower kinetic chain. So all those muscle and intramuscular and intermuscular uh, coordination needs to be, to be uh, in order and not to be compensated or not uh, compensation, compensations are natural, but we have to keep them in the level then where we can control them and at the level they work for us, not injuring us, okay? And uh, 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 those compensation we need to treat in preseason, and to develop your proper body mechanics in every in every single uh, in every characteristical uh, uh, motor task that you have in your in your uh, uh, competitive part of of season. Uh, so Achilles tendon definitely closely connected to, to uh, patellar tendon, anterior knee pain. We call it a jumper's knee when it comes to the pain. But let me remind you again, when it comes to pain, there is, this is chronic injury. We are already in injury zone. We are not in acute injury zone, but we are getting there uh, slowly. Patellar tendon has uh, Patellar tendon itself has a lot of neuro, neuromuscular uh, fibers, neuromuscular control connectors. And when the uh, same as Achilles tendon, but um, uh, Achilles tendon is controlled by triceps muscle and uh, 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 three, -head mus three headed muscle, and uh, patellar tendon is controlled by four headed muscles. And uh, much more uh, sensitive. Uh, fibers, neurosensitive fibers we have in a, in a patellar tendon than in Achilles tendon. Uh, so uh, jumper's knee will, uh, when patellar, patellar, uh, um, patellar tendon is painful, uh, control of quadriceps muscle is very poor. And uh, motor response of quadriceps muscle is decreased up to 80 percent depending on the pain so those let's say small pain that you that you um, uh, experience usually in the beginning of the of the activity then when you get warmed up it goes away slowly and then after the activity it comes back um, we divided those symptoms in 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 three in three groups First group is just when you have pain on the beginning of the, of the activity of the training and it goes away and do not come back until the next activity. And this is the group one. We are still not endangered 
but this, this is the very, very important sign that you can, can rely on that something is happening with your lower kinetic chain. Okay. Second is when you have pain in beginning of, of activity or training, then it, it, it decreases and then comes back after the training or after the short break. Usually it goes like this, pain on the beginning goes out, you go out from the, from the training to rest, you rest for a few minutes and then you come back on the court and your knees are painful. So this is the second degree of this injury. And this, the, when, when we have this, I know we also, always also have not very good compensation that will lead us in, in a way of promoting the injury, not healing the injury. And third, third definitely, uh, definitely, uh, uh, let's say worse uh, uh, group or, or, or grade is when you have morning pain that uh, goes on, that um, increases your uh, everyday activities, that uh, the stairs with these uh, um, uh, steeps and hills you cannot do with these. And then you come to the, to the uh, training, you ask your physios for some massage or some ointment, okay, he does this. Uh, it brings uh, short-term relief. And then you go back on the court with compensation of your lower kinetic chain, and then you just increase and increase your injury. But patellar uh, tendonitis is very, very stubborn because it need, we it uh, when you come to us to medical medical staff with patellar patellar tendonitis that is in grade three, we have to we have uh, to relieve you from all physical activities. We have to work on your quadriceps muscle on your calf muscles, and we have to work on your, on your uh, 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 motor abilities when the possibility opens. So when you can do squat, symmetrical squat, or when you can do asymmetrical squat, single leg squat, or some of the easiest, easy motor tasks, then we can progress to some to some training. And let me tell you, we, we are speaking about four weeks of recovery when we have uh, third degree patellar tendonitis. Okay. Um, Achilles tendon is a bit different. Achilles tendon really, really uh, um, gives us warning signs in metal den patellar tendon does because it, it, because it has less neuromotor and ne neuro pain, pain receptors, let's put, put it that way. So uh, you have to follow and uh, even the smallest pain in, in Achilles tendon should be treated and should be addressed. Maybe not treated with, uh, with uh, um, stopping the activity or uh, take you out of the training, but even the a small pain in a Achilles tendon will only increase, will not get, go away by itself. Not by any ointment or any ph just physical ag agents. Let's say we put some laser and it goes away, it will not go away. Um, if, um, if somebody ever proposes you to give you a corticosteroid injection in Achilles tendon, please refuse because uh, corticosteroid it will endanger the structure of Achilles tendon and it will snap in 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 a moment when you need it the least okay and the injury of Achilles tendon is um, rehabilitation is uh, whether operative or non-operative is not less than than eight months and for for LCA we can do it shorter than six months so uh, I I am the most feared injury that I uh, have is um, is Achilles Achilles tendon rupture. So you have to listen to your Achilles tendon. Even a, sm a slight pain, you have to report, and we have to deal even with the small with the smallest pain. Let's go on the shoulders. Shoulder is the most complex joint of our of our body. Um, uh, in previous talk, I explained, but for those who weren't there at that time, 
we have deep muscles of the shoulder and surface muscle of the shoulder. Um, deep muscles are called, uh, are called rotator cuff and um, surface muscles are deltoid, uh, pectoralis major, and, and um, latissimus dorsi. Those are sur surf surface muscles. Um, muscles of rotator cuff are there to to bring the shoulder into the into the joint because arm is uh, uh, beside the body and it moves okay it, it has to suck in the the shoulder joint and the uh, surface the surface muscles are uh, muscles of the movement and um, uh, they move your arms where you want where you want them to be you want them to go so uh, when we have in Injury and overuse injury, it will very rarely be on the surface muscles, and the, it, it will usual. It is usually on the rotator cuff muscles, and this rotator cuff muscles, my rotator cuff is sustained of the five muscles, and they are all working in very very good uh, intramuscular coordination. When one, one of them is out, then all four are out. All, all other four muscles are out, and uh, we need to to prepare your shoulders during preparation period for loading that you will have during the season. Because even one of those, and you will feel usually pain in front area, anterior area of the, of the joint or in a lateral when you move your arm like this or like this, you will feel the pain and those are some of the muscles of the rotator cuff. Okay, rehabilitation of rotator cuff is um, demanding, not too demanding. Um, I have shown some of the of the exercises to Katarina is there, and I don't know is uh, Malina there also, but they do know how much the uh, how complex is the the this type of rehabilitation or this type of re-coordination of the rotator cuff. Okay, do we have any questions so far? No? Okay, let me go. Franco, let me maybe, about maybe it's best uh, because the ladies are running low on time because of all this stuff. So it would be great if you could speak directly at maybe the athletes who are sitting out of our training right now. So if they could ask a question or type a question then we could kind of bring it home with that to deal with the issues that are actually like happening right now. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, I'm running also low on time. Yeah. Uh, so I will. I would like to conclude with uh, with the slight story of the back, and then uh, we can schedule for the for those players to to speak with me Perfect. Uh, face Let's to hear face. That story. Uh, I believe you can organize some time in in some in in following days okay same time window where i can sit and, and speak with it uh, uh, i will just go on the back so uh by the biology uh female uh, growth should be 165 and men growth should be 175 all those, all of us who are taller than those numbers have, will in some point of life experience low back pain. So as higher you are, you are more prone to the injury. Will, would it be structural or just, or just functional injury of the, low, of the low back? We are all prone to it. So, before we, we get, get injured, we have to uh, uh, remodel our, our uh, neuromotoric, neuromotoric response to the loading we have. Okay, so we need to do those, uh, those very, very um, dull exercises for deep muscles of our spine, of our low back, so we can, those, deep muscles could support our surface and movement muscles. 
Okay. So those are the exercises like Superman or, you know, Superman, when you lie on your stomach can do opposite arm and leg at the same time. But it also has to be done in proper way and not in a way that I can see a lot of, a lot of young sports uh, do this exercise. So methodology of those exercises are very important and uh, all physios should know this, this methodology. So ask them to, in your, in your uh, circles, ask them to provide you with good, uh, with you good exercise programs for lower back. I will not um, try not to speak about disc injuries or, or, um, uh, or uh, uh, disc or neural injuries when disc when discs are uh, are uh, uh, pressing on the neural uh, neural uh, structures and causing lumbosialgia or some other other form, forms of it. I, I hopefully you're, you're all too young for, to to experience this, but I need you to be aware that this will this can happen, and I need you to do proper exercises for the for the muscles of your back. And uh, the, the most, the best program that is not therapeutic, completely therapeutic program is a DOA program. So you can, in your, in your uh, areas, you can find um, far practitioners that do a DOA program for, for deep uh, muscle control, deep, deep spinal muscle control and uh, uh, ask them to work with you uh, or to show you those, those exercises. Uh, probably in some, in some other combine, I will be there and I'll show you some of it. But uh, for now, try in your, in your areas to find somebody who will support you with it. It is called LDOA program. You can Google it and you will, you will see it, okay? Okay, so please, please uh, uh, keep in touch. We should be communicating. And uh, I would like to have um, info from you, how useful you find this topic that I covered today. And uh, uh, that's it. Ryan, do you have anything else for me? Oh, thank you so much. And thanks for your patience. They have a review form and they can leave a review for everyone who's given a talk and they should be doing that tomorrow. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, you see who wants to, to meet with me and uh, we can organize a chat. But, yeah, if uh, they come to me and ask for sure, I'm gonna put them in touch with you. Thank you so much, Franco. Okay, okay. No problem, ciao. Oh, ciao guys. Ciao, ciao. thank you. Ciao.